Hello, people. It's five o'clock. Um, and we are we are doing watch me work now. And we're gonna do watch me work. I know with our we're having various technological excitements. We're having various technology opportunities. That's what we call them, technological opportunities. Um, but we're here and uh we're going to do watch me work like we do it every week, like we've been doing it for the past, I don't know, 14, 15 years. At some point, I got to figure out actually how long we've been doing it because it's been a while. Um, and uh, we were doing it once every week in the lobby of the public theater. And then uh, we didn't start in the lobby of the public theater. We started in a theater uh, down the street from the public theater, but then we moved to the public theater. And now then when the pandemic hit, we moved online and here we are forevermore. Um, I'm Susan Lurie Parks and we are hosted by HowlRound and New Work Development at the Public Theater. And Amrita and Zoe are there, but Amrita is the head of the New Work, the New Development, the New Work Development Department, but her camera is not working. So you want to get, say hi I'm, anyway, Amrita? I would love to say hi. Thanks, SLP. Hello, everyone. Um, it is good to see you. I do not know why my laptop camera is not allowing my face to be revealed, but I promise you it is me and looking forward to today's session. All right. And and Zoe is, are you still frozen? Zoe, no, you're, you are frozen. I, I know my face actually does move, though right now it is frozen in one face. Um, I'm so sorry about the background noise. There is some um, announcement going on at the Museum of History right now. But anyway, hi, I'm Zoe. I'm the New York Development Manager, and I'm very happy to be here. Awesome sauce. Okay. Um, and uh, we're going to work for 20 minutes. Then we're going to take your questions about your work and your creative process. And while we don't have time to actually share work and read work here, we do have plenty of time to talk about process and, and cheer you on and offer encouragement. So here we go. 20 minutes and here we go. Go. Yeah.
Ready, all right. There we are. Okay. So as you, um, yay, look, she can move now. All right. So <laughs> as you uh, have questions, uh, go ahead. We're here. Yes, it's a small group, but please use your raise the hand function and then um, we'll hopefully get a cue going. Be brave, it's a small, safe space. <laughs> Lori, yes, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, thanks. I actually have two questions. Great. LP, last time you were talking about a word that your husband used, my wife has got family in Germany. <laughs> you were talking about like when you, when you want to like connect with people at a bar, what was that oh, word? Because for, oh, it's for gluing. Okay, for <laughs> gluing. Um, and it might be. Uh, no, I don't think it's a di I don't think it's a dialect. I think it's because oh. he has family in in Köln, and so it might be Kölsch, but I don't think so. Okay, think it's regular German. For yeah, hers is in Dusseldorf. I don't know, but it's, it's just been the burning question of the week. Well, in this G O R G L U H E N. I think. I think it's full V O R G L U H E N. Okay, great. Thanks. Now about craft. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about trying to get a a narrator in a piece that I've been working with. It's a it's a piece about a serial killer. It's an interview with him and a reporter. But I'm really thinking of reworking it and having, he was kind of, um, it's based on a, a true serial killer from uh, my hometown. And the reason uh, he never got a lot of, if you will, notorieties, because these women were all prostitutes. And I want to give one of the prostitutes uh, some sort of voice. And I'd like to do it through almost like a narrator as a ghost. Uh -huh. narration's hard and I'm having trouble figuring out how to integrate a narrator um, it, th that's, that really works. It, it's just a device I'm not used to and, and some of it's going to break the fourth wall. So I just wanted to know if you had any creative thoughts on that part of the craft. Right. So uh, it would, it, so he, it's a man serial killer. I mean, uh -huh. I'm just going to use these words, man, woman, whatever. I'm going to use yeah. them. Uh -huh. uh, man okay and the, the people he killed were women yeah yeah mm -hmm. and right. i think eight of them eight of the nine were seven of the nine were prostitutes mm -hmm. so. and uh right so what would what would the narrator provide us what would, what would she help us with so when i was doing all this research i realized that everything that I learned was, you know, whether it was a biography or the police records or interviews or anything, it was just all men's voices. So I would like mm -hmm. to bring, a, a, you know, one of the women victims voices to it, to explain the perspective of, of someone who felt they could trust someone and was duped. Uh, by this person and, right. and the thing about him he was very and, and this is what I get through all the the research he was extremely personable right so, why only one narrator what's that why only one woman's voice well that's a great question <laughs> I don't know I mean because, because you, all the research you're doing I'm just saying I'm just repeating what you said back to you kind of paraphrasing all the research I'm doing there's so many men's voices, men's plural. Yeah. So you only want to include one woman. I mean, could you include more than one? Yeah. And you have to, would you have to, uh, you, you know, I mean, yeah. So I think I, I would vote for more than one. You know, yeah. I mean, they got a lot to say about him. Yeah, yeah. They got a lot to say about him. Don't limit it to just one woman who's got to hold up the whole sky for all those people. Okay. You know? um, and they can, I mean, uh, you know, uh, be mindful that you're, I'm, I'm less interested in sort of the, you know, you're speaking for the serial killer. I'm more, I would be more mindful that you're speaking for the women who were killed. You know, just be yeah. very mindful about that. Yeah. And also, I would say, feel free to make up people. Okay. Yeah, okay. there's some, because there's some people we haven't heard of who either weren't found or he didn't 
managed to kill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There are a lot. And so, you know, imagine like, I mean, if you've ever, you know, hung around with people, regardless of who you're dating, you know, say you, you run into three people who dated the same person and the person was just an asshole. Right. Mm -hmm. And regardless of gender, it's not about whatever. It's not about your bits. It's about the character of the person. And they were an asshole. And so you're hanging out in a bar and everybody's got a story to tell about that person. Oh my God. Do you remember when like they, right, wore that hat and they thought it was cool? <laughs> oh my God, they wore the hat on my day too. You know what I mean? Whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. So these women have a lot to say about him. Yeah, they do. Thank and you. that will be, I think it will make it really fun. Okay. Okay. Oh, because because you're not just employing them, you know, to relay information. I mean, who care, you know, about what he did to them. You know, they got a lot of shit to say about him. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's one of the things I, I worry about. It's good to like just be here and hear it. I don't want to slip into, you know, just narrative and monologue. They just don't want that. So Right. And then there were a lot of women who, who, who you're going to make up. Yeah. Make it like a lot of women. Yeah. All women. And then him, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but a whole bunch of women and him. Yeah. And he okay. can't get a word in edgewise. Yeah. Right. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, and not because, you know, because of what he did. Shut right. up. You don't get the last word. Ha 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 ha. We're talking now. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I don't know. Just, you know, really. Actually, that's that's good because he was a talker. <laughs> yeah, of course he was. See, I'm vibing him just because, like, <laughs> he's like, yak, 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 yak. I'm in power. I'm in charge. Yak, yak, yak. Ha, ha. I duped you. And now I can kill you. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 there are a lot of women who have things to say about him that are not complimentary yeah yeah i just feel it's their time yeah lots of them okay i like that even I like, like that. the waitress you know the waitress in the bar or the barmaid where he went oh my god oh, or yeah. maybe he liked him i mean well and it's not all like bad mouthing but it's just like Really? Are you really interested in hearing about him? No, you're going to hear more about them. Because I, I, I mean, I don't know. People, this fascination people have with, oh yeah, let's have yet another, you know, limited series about Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh wow, uh, you know, I mean, please, really? Exactly. You yeah. know, let's yeah. have another one. Let's be all riveted to our our screens watching Jeffrey Dahmer. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, you know. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like the made up women too. And I like the oh, whole definitely. idea they can't talk. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of your power is in the made up women. Yeah. Because you, you also don't have, you know, I mean, just be mindful that the women you're, you know, the real women are, you know, you have that really big responsibility. Yes. And that can be shared by some women that just come out of your imagination. Yeah. 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 And I have to really be careful and mindful and maybe even talk with some of them. I know that there are still, I mean, even though it was like 30 years ago, there are still some family members, you know, that are out there. So I just want to be mindful. Yeah. 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 And you, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Lori. For gluing. For gluing. <laughs> Kimmy D. Hey, Kimmy, how you doing? Hi. Hi. Uh, I just came up with a question listening. Um, thank you for the question, Lori, by the way, and everybody for being here as always. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could impart some techniques that I can use to organize projects better because I might be working on one and then I'll think, oh, this is a great idea or this is a passage that probably works better in something else. And I have crap all over my computer. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how to kind of organize and stay, stay, 
I'm not great at organization, I guess is what. So I know you work on multiple projects and I was wondering if you can maybe give me some ideas as to how to compartmentalize different things at the at the same time. Right. Well, that's great. A question, Kimmy. Um, do you have, uh, you know, folders on your computer or? Yeah. Yes. I Yes. Okay. okay. So every project can go in a folder. I mean, it's just like you would do it on your desk. You probably have done this already though, right? I'm guess. I mean. Not, I, I mean, I've just in trying to do the application. I don't know if my computer is too old or what, but I'll try to find things after just after downloading and I don't know where it goes. I I think if I would have known technology was going to be so stressful, I would have had children. I don't <laughs> maybe you can rent me your child to help me with my technology. <laughs> he's, he's, he's 12. He's not going to help you unless you want to get on Snapchat. Um, yeah. Uh, well, well, it's not, I mean, it, what we're talking about, isn't that too complicated and it's always better, you know, we're going to learn to fish for ourselves, you know, so we can yeah. fish forever. However the saying goes, I mean, I mean, I think the, uh, you, you put everything in a folder, you label a folder, you know, you okay. label all your folders every time you have a new idea. I mean, it, it's as simple as you can create a new document and just type on it and put it in a, in, in the folder labeled, whatever blah 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 whatever it's called you know what i mean so you can just keep throwing things as if it were a or you can have an actual fold a, a a folder on your desk and just write it on a piece of paper and toss it in the folder you know you can do that too yeah that's uh, good for me yeah yeah so you can you can totally do that that works and then when you're ready to sit down and focus on a project you can take the folder and put it in front of you and then look through it um if you want to get even more interesting you can buy some or use if you have already some uh, inboxes, you know, some flat inboxes, and have a but you know, so your piles are contained. In oh, that's a great piles. idea. Yeah. Yes, I would like that. Thank yeah, you so you just, very much. You just have piles of stuff, and it's all contained or baskets. Um, I would suggest inboxes; they don't get too full, or you know, small, not bags where things are, or, or, although if you have some of those shopping bags, now that they make, when you forget your own shopping bag at the store, if you want to get a bunch of shopping bags and just label them and put them around your, your whatever living room or workspace, that works too. Um, you know, just put them in different places physically. And then when you want to go and work on something, you grab the bag and look through it and lay it all out on your table and say, okay, for the next hour, I'm working on this one project and see what you got. Thank you. Know. you. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Kimmy D. How about Lou? Hey, Lou. How you doing? Hi. It's so nice to talk to you and see you. Um, I have one update and one question. Sure. The last time we talked, I told we were talking about recognition, and mm -hmm. you you talked to me about when you won um, the Tony and you looked good and you were proud. <laughs> you told me not to sort of. Yeah, I, was, I don't know if you remember, but it was like, what do you do when you get in recognition and all that pressure? But I, I wasn't able to tell you what it was, but I'm going to tell you what it was. Oh, yeah, right. So I am a 2023 Niska Naifa nonfiction fellow, which I believe is an award you won up in your very early career. The congratulations. Niska congratulations. Thank you That's so, so much. great. That yeah. is so fantastic. Yay. Yeah, I'm really <laughs> proud. Yeah, look at you. Congratulations. Thanks. That's really great. Thank That's you. Great, Lou, we're so proud of you. I know. Thank you. Well, I mean, I don't, I just, yeah, I just am overwhelmed and I'm so proud to be a part of this group. It's been a huge part of my growth as I've developed as a writer. And I'm just so thankful to you and everybody. Well, here, you've truly. done the work. You've done the work, haven't you? Yes, you have. I've been showing up. I've been showing yeah. up and um, it was nice. a long shot when I applied and then uh, there it was. And I took a screen grab of the, uh, them telling me and it's on my laptop. So every time I open, it's mm -hmm. like, well, I guess Yay. somebody out there is wanting Yay. to keep going. So yeah. anyway, so thank Yay. you. I wanted to That's share really that. Great. Congratulations. And then, thank you so much. And then, so I have work to do because yeah. that's a big, you know, yeah. it's like, okay, this is some yeah. belief in me. So let me keep going. And um, I'm working with my um, agent to get my book proposal out in probably January or February. So uh -huh. we'll see what happens. But this is the craft and writing question. I'm sitting with pages and pages of work on my uh, manuscript proposal and my book, 
And I really, I'm being charged with appropriately doing kind of a brutal edit, just like get it as pointed and focused and clean and clear and sharp because my tendency as a writer, I can sometimes get be a little wordy, maybe even in our, you know, how you can see I can. And sometimes I fall in love with things and they've been there for a while and I'm in love with them. But I understand conceptually, like not everything is, the best thing, you know, and, but I'm just like struggling with where to cut, how to cut, how to approach editing, how to kill the darlings or not, what to elevate. And I just wanted to sort of hear any guidance on, you know, just how to be brutal with an edit and make it better. Brutal. Mm. 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 I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Yeah. Cause I've heard those phrases, kill your darlings. Yeah. What was, who's that? Uh, yeah, uh, I should know if I'm going to quote it, but yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, that's not, no, that's not a, that's, it wasn't a test. It, it's not like, I want to say it's a poet, but anyway, someone, someone will know. Um, it's not, or Faulkner. No, it's not Faulkner. It's somebody, some, anyway, somebody. Um, and then yeah, be brutal and all these words, you know, I don't really, uh, think in those terms um because mm. i you know because i don't i i feel like you know because they're, they're they're people who are coming out of various writing programs back in the day who would say like break the back of your play and break the spot you know like crack your play i cracked my play i killed it nailed it you know all these kind of i'm like yeah okay i mean you know whatever whatever works um at the same time um somehow I always, uh, well, so this is the thing. So when you cut something from your work, all right, what do you think happens to it? Like cut it. But like really, where, like you want me to try to imagine what happens to it? Or is yeah, it yeah, just for fun. Sometimes the image I have answering you is it feels like it gets absorbed into, it's like it gets invisibilized. Like it's still there, but it's like, I don't know. It's like, like a ghost in the work, maybe. It's a ghost. That's, okay. Okay. That's my okay. first thought. Okay. So if it were like a, if you had like a, uh, if, if it, your work were a tree or, you know, like a shrub, you know, and you cut a branch, what would happen to the branch? Mm. Yeah, it might fall. It might uh fuel some other growth it might roll into a lake and be on the side of it I don't know it ha might have many lives right that's what I'm thinking yeah right. right good great it would fall imagine it falling and fueling other growth like have you ever been mm -hmm. to I mean I this is like now I'm just like guessing because have you ever been to a redwood forest I have you, you know how they grow they the center and then the you know there's mm -hmm. one center and then there's a there is a circle and then you see the pine conesy things and there's other ones you know and I don't know anything more than that about redwoods <laughs> but you know things fall off and they fall to the ground and they grow so the idea of like getting in there and being brutal and ah, I mean I've, I've never done cuts and felt like I'm being brutal and like kill your darling. So what do you do? You're supposed to look for your favorite passages that you love and kill it. I mean, really? Is that what you or don't hold on to something just because you love it? Maybe you're supposed to hold on to something because you do love it. I don't know. I just want to look at it differently. Um, you go in. OK, this is the thing. Writing and rewriting. Maybe we've talked about this before and watch me work. Maybe not. I think we might have had, but we'll do it again. Writing is anything goes, everything grows. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. You're in, you've done that already. Correct, Lou. You've done the anything goes, everything grows. Where we're going to do this quick experiment. Um, your favorite, uh, if you could, if I could say a jungle or a, a pine forest, which would you pick? Pine forest. Great. So you're in a pine forest, okay? And there you are. You're sitting in the pine forest. Anything goes, everything grows. That's your writing process, isn't it? Lovely, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. So now. Um, this is your rewriting process. If I were to say, let's see, a color, um, white, gray, black, or 
brown, what would you pick? Gray. Great, great. And then what's um, just off the top of your head for right this moment, what's like your favorite song right now? Oh, uh, Billie Eilish, uh, See Me in a Crown. See Me in a Crown? I think that, or maybe, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you're on this, so you're in a field, you're in a beautiful field, right? And you're riding your gray horse and you have in, which is your dominant hand? Right hand. Great. You see, you have in your right hand, your beautiful sword of discrimination. You know what I'm talking about when I say sword of discrimination, it's not like racist, right? It's like, you know, what <laughs> is from what ain't. That's your mm-hmm. service information. Okay, I just had to say that. Okay, so you have in your hand. So you're riding your horse. And let me see if I can get it on the camera. Ah, there we go. So you're swinging. You're riding the horse. And you're swinging the sword of discrimination. <laughs> and you're cutting everything that doesn't belong. It feels it's really fun. And while you're swinging your sword, you're riding your horse. You're listening to your favorite Billie Eilish song, right? And it feels fantastic. And it's like, yeah. And everything that falls to the ground is going to grow up in something else, into Mm. something else when it's the right time. You know, you're that fertile and it's joyful. I've never done edits going like, (laughs) not yet. I mean, I don't know. I've been writing for 40 years. Maybe next week I'm going to be like, ah, I hate, I always love cutting shit. Cut, yay. Now it's like even better. You know, I, I, put it off to the side it'll grow into something else or not yeah it's okay that's so helpful okay i love that thank you so much i'm gonna put that song on repeat and just get the song on get into the groove be like yeah this is gonna make it so much better this feels great if i cut something that's dear to me it's okay because it's definitely gonna sprout somewhere else oh that whole paragraph on gobbledygookity oh that's fine we're good we're going right just have fun i love cutting i i love cutting so much i scare people in (laughs) rehearsal they're like oh my god i'm like here come the magic scissors because it only makes it better (laughs) and if you miss it oh my god take it and put it back in yeah and if the editor goes, Lou, where was that passage on? You can never stop me, Luke. You go, it's right here. And here, we'll put it back in. Or it actually belongs at the end or it belongs in the beginning, whatever, whatever. It's so, so fun. Cutting is yeah. so fun. You've done the hard work. You've done all the big hard work. Now you just get to ride your gray horse with your Billie Eilish song. <laughs> I will do it. And I'll keep you posted. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your fellowship. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so fantastic. Yeah, keep us posted. I will. Thank you. Sasha. Hey, Sasha. Hi. Hey, hi, SLP. Hey. Um, oh, I just did a quick Google for that quote, and um, it could have been Faulkner. Oh, but they actually, it says they didn't, they don't know who it's attributed to, but it could have been okay. Faulkner, like Oscar Wilde or some mid-century, you know, writer. Um, um, some probably dude. White dude. Oh, whoa, whoa. I see you said it. I didn't. Some <laughs> white dude who had he ever had a real darling. Ooh. I'm ooh. just saying. I oh. cherish my darlings. I don't kill them. Maybe, you know, I mean, you know, my darling. Hey, had he ever been a mom? You know what? We don't kill our darlings. We just tell them to go over there and sit down and be quiet for a minute because they're not needed right now. I mean, wow. Oh, what an am- that's an amazing take on that. I'm just, I'm just, because what happens is these great writers, Oscar Wilde, great writer, William Faulkner, great writer, give it up. They could, they can write and they're amazing. They say these things and then over time, we, we we say them over and over and then we become like, oh shit, I can't think because I have to do it the way they said. And they were meaning to be helpful. Over time, it, it's less than helpful and we're repeating it in our head and it's not working for us. So I'm just, I'm not saying throw out that saying, I'm just saying there's a whole nother, there's a whole nother paradigm. 
that is equal. Yeah, maybe, maybe they weren't doing it to be helpful. Maybe they were doing it to be like the authority. And that's, I think, why you're so great because you, I think you really are helpful because you help people understand themselves more than you want to be like an expert on stuff. And I think. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, what I say, you know, we, 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 as, as my son in seventh grade says, we give them grace. <laughs> the shit he come home with. I'm giving her grace. I'm, I'm giving them grace today. I'm giving them grace. So we're, we give them grace. We say they were trying, they were being helpful. They were doing the best they can with the tools they had. And we're going to, we're going to exam, we're going to develop a new paradigm that works for us today. And so we can go forward and get our work done. Right. But thanks for looking it up. Faulkner, Oscar Wilde, somebody, somebody, maybe Ginsburg. No, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Ginsburg, too, of or what's his name? The guy who like Ginsburg's friend who like a she not accidentally like on purpose like shot his wife in the head or something. What was his name? Paul skinny guy. Naked lunch. Burroughs. Oh, the Kerouac one. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, I they I I think of them all in one happy group. Anyway, they said maybe even Chekhov. I don't know, but Chekhov. You know. Okay, so it must. So yeah, something got might have gotten lost in translation. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, translated from Russian, ride on your horse, listening to Billie Eilish, and it ended up <laughs> <laughs> your sword, <laughs> right? That's such a great mental image. I do kind of have a question, I guess. Sure. Um, if um, sure, yeah. sure, I'm right. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, forgive me because I feel like I'm kind of being a little like thinking about it kind of in a binary way, but I guess I was kind of looking for maybe if you have any. Um, like in your own experience, like, I guess, like how you kind of got, uh, like guidance around knowing when to like push yourself or give it gas or like knowing when to like, like take it easy. Uh, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, you ever come up against that or. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Like give it like, um, I mean, I usually give it gas when it's easy going you know when it when it when it will move you know what I mean and take it easy when it's hard so if I were client if I were you know climbing a mountain if I were out of breath you know struggling then I'd like take I'd slow down I wouldn't like yeah I want to run right now I am not gonna do that because I'm listening to my breath my breathing my legs are hurting the the, gr the grips aren't that very solid and I'm just trying to make my way you know um Sometimes you have to slow down to go faster. I like showing up every day. That's sort of the, the inch along, you know, Sh do yourself a favor. I would say, suggest show up every day, even if it's just for 20 minutes. That's why we do this. Even if it's just like, here I am at my notebook, hating my work. I'm <laughs> You know, right? <laughs> 20 minutes. Okay. I did that. Great. You know what I mean? Just show up every day. And then, uh, as it seems to move, build up the gas. Does that make sense? Do you try, do you show up every day for your work? Well, see, I was going to ask you if, can you count other creative, like, you know, other creative media, as like, like what like for example I've seen you play your guitar sometimes you have You're supposed to be writing so I kind of felt like maybe it's okay to just play some music or like draw or you know yes let's say yes 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 I would say yes I would say um yeah if if that's what's working for that moment like you can't because it's not the, sh the show isn't called watch me write go watch me work and because I do work in a lot of different media. So I, I if I'm playing my guitar during Watch Me Work, I'm usually writing a song. I wish you would well, let us hear it sometimes. I feel like it would be help. It's helpful even just, I feel like it changes the energy. Like it's so nice to write alongside someone who's playing music. It's so interesting. I'm not, if I'm writing a song, it's not going to be that helpful to you. Because yeah. it's me going, oh shit, fuck. <laughs> fuck. What is that chord? Damn, I don't know. Oh, let me try this one. Oh, well, maybe that's good. Yeah, you know, we, that's not interesting. 
um, or helpful. But uh, you can play music. You can play Billie Eilish music. You can play, you know, you can play music um, while you write that because that could be enjoyable or, or you know. Um, but I, I would say, sure, you can. I would say sh find some way every day to show up for your creative self. How about that? And because the muse, you know, she, he, they, them, it, whatever, uh, they're watching. And they're, they, the more you show up, the more they'll show up. And you keep showing up for you and they'll be more inclined to show up for you. You know, think of them, they're shy. They, they're not going to make the first move, you know. They, they 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 need you. That you're you're the flesh. <laughs> you know what I mean. You're the one. You know they're like you know. So, so they're the spirit. So if you show up, if you keep showing up, look, muse, I'm showing up. Here's my notebook. Here's my timer. Here's my pen or whatever you write with or create with. Here's my guitar. Here I'm I'm working on the choreography for this thing. I'm 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 I I don't know any words, so I'm just turning on some music and I'm dancing it out. The feelings. Cause I don't know the words for the feelings and I'm just spending 20 minutes just dancing it. And that's all I could manage today. I'm showing up in some way for my creative self every day, preferably at around the same time. You know, think of the muse as a friend who's trying to find you, right? You have to make yourself discoverable. So she's trying to find you out of all the millions of people in the world and the gazillions of beings in the universe. You're sending up a signal or you're sending out a signal. Right? If it's, if it's intermittent and all that, that it's going to be hard to find you. But if you send out a consistent signal the same around the same time every day, they know how to find you and they'll find you. I know it sounds really woo woo, but I, I like that. Um, it's true. It Does that make sense? So you pick your favorite part of the day, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever. And you just show it was a time that, you know, like I like morning. I'm a morning person. Just naturally. I get up first thing in the morning. I get up very early and I do my little things that I do. And then I, I build my day out from there so that I can be discoverable to the muse so that they know where to find me. And it doesn't make it like easy or anything like that, but it makes it easier. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to like stand them up, but I also just don't want to force some, like, I don't want to write something like out of a place of like, um, oh, the wrong kind of like place because then it just doesn't <clears throat> feel right to me and I feel like I'm wasting you know I'm wasting the muse's time or you know whatever yeah but it, you mean you don't I mean you don't want to write something that's like not good no it just doesn't feel good to do it or like you know like where it just feels like I really don't want to do this you know well I guess that's kind of where the question sort of came from it's like how do you know when to be like you know like those coaches on like the biggest loser or something be like just you know just do it and like versus be like you know what maybe like it's not right i would i would say that yeah i mean it, it's yeah the right the, the coaches and they they kind of encourage their 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 clients or whatever to like i don't know what i've never watched that show but i know what you're talking about uh go run up the hill or jump over the fence or whatever or like they're just always like i haven't watched either but just the commercials yeah. like, you're so weak like you know like that kind of talk yeah yeah right you're so like right you're so weak kill your darlings yeah i mean and that's fine i'm not saying they're wrong they're specialists in that field and they are on tv doing it so who am i to blow against that wind but but and in our field we can we can discover alternate paradigms Right. So to sit at your desk and turn on your timer and say to the muse, I'm here, I'm discoverable, I'm writing, it hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, here's another German word. Uh, you, I don't know if it's a German word. It's a word. 
that my husband used, Shlorafia, Shlorafia. So there's this idea. Let me see, maybe if I talk loud enough, he'll hear me talking and correct me. No, he can't hear me talking. Okay, there's this idea that, like, I'm going to get it wrong, but you guys can look it up on the internet. Paradise, paradise is right there. It's right there. It's, you have to chew through a wall of wet, hard oatmeal. And then paradise is on the other side and everything you've ever wanted is over there. Yeah. So imagine, you know, there I am, you know, there I am, Muse. I have my notebook. I have my timer. I'm going to spend 20 minutes chewing through the wall. They're waiting for you. They're just waiting for you. They want to show us, they, come on, commitment. Come on, how much you want it. Show them that you love them. It doesn't feel, it doesn't always feel like, hooray. No, that's not what art, the artistic process is all about. That's TV, that's television. Like, you know, Dr. Zhivago, he goes into that house. It's like winter in Russia, right? And he picks up the inkwell and they play that music and he starts writing. That's bullshit because it's frozen ink. That doesn't work, right? But it's so romantic. And Julie Christie is there looking like Julie Christie. And there's Omar Sharif and he's writing. I mean, please, right? It doesn't work like that. It's like Shlorafia. The word is so funny. I think he's messing with you. Okay, probably. That's why I married him. He makes me laugh. You know, but does that is so it's okay. You're writing and it's it doesn't feel it doesn't always feel good, but you show up anyway. And you write you you dare to write some stuff that's not great. And you keep so, going. So you're saying sometimes it will feel terrible. And sometimes feel it will like feel you're... terrible. Join the club. It doesn't always feel good. Sometimes it will feel amazingly, fantastically, amazingly great. And sometimes it will feel like not so great. And you're like, okay. Okay. It's like being in love. It's like being married. Not every day is like, oh my God, he got me some red roses. You know, it's not like that. It doesn't, and it doesn't have to be. But it's six o'clock. It's six o'clock. And I have the watch me work tip of the week, a suggestion for your digestion. Um, uh, maybe I, if I said this last week, oh, well, news fast. Did I talk about going on a news fast last week? No. no. Mm -hmm. I know Henry Kissinger is dead. Okay. I'm on a news fast. I just happened to see it on the side of a building or something. Okay. Guess what? It's so great because you're trying to tune into yourself, to your muse. You're trying to make yourself discoverable. It makes it so much easier when you stop listening to the news. See how long you can go. Even NPR, even ProPublica or, you know, all the good stations. Oh, who cares? Stop. Just give yourself a pause. Push pause for a little bit. You know, I promise the 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 important the important stuff you'll you'll know about. Just try for a day, and see if you can hear the inner voices a little bit better. It's six oh one. We're coming back next week, are we not? So yes, we, we are. are. Yes, we, we are. are. Back next week, and actually, I'll just say next week is our last meeting of the year. So we our take a break after of. that, and then we'll regroup in January. So I hope to see you all next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Great group today. Thank you so much. Bye.